may be seated. In the name of the Lord. Amen. When you're lifted up in pride, as I was talking about last uh, Sunday, God sets himself up in battle formation against you. That's what he did to Lucifer. And he was Satan in because he got beside himself. He wanted God's position. Amen. And he found something out. He found something out. We talked about the, uh, surrender, having a teachable spirit. We talked about that. We talked about the characteristics of an unteachable spirit. We went over all that. It's on YouTube if you want to go back and listen to it. I always go back on there and, and, and allow that word to, even though I preach it and teach it, I go back and listen to it so that word can go back and bless me. A teachable spirit always precedes success. You're going to be successful if you're teachable. Amen. This is part two of this. A teachable spirit is all, always precedes success. An unteachable person going to be successful in failing. Oh, did I say something wrong? You're going to fail. And it ain't if you're going to fail, it's when you're going to fail. You're going to fail. All things are possible to them that believe. Church ain't got that one yet. I don't know if we can do that. Did Jesus say we could? He said all things. What, 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 what don't all mean? We understand all the cheesecake gone. All the hot links gone. We understand that all. All the church is gone. Y'all on that one. All right. But he said we can do all things. What do you mean? What I'm asking, whatever I'm asking and commanding you to do, you can get it done. That ain't popular today. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. He coming back. Boy, if Jesus come back today, we ain't got nothing to worry about. But if he don't come back to 200 years, we better be concerned about what you finna hear. Amen. Let me get my ink pen here. All right. So, Matthew. Well, let's get the last verse we read. John 14. John 14. John 14. John. Gospel John. Gospel John 14. Gospel John 14. Can I just get seven and read on down and we'll go here and go there and we're going to be led here. Let's get, get seven. Can we get seven? Wait a minute. I, I, I gotta teach all this because it it just jumped out at me. I ain't got, I, I know I know what God doing. Come on, give me give me give me that. Give me give me give me uh, verse seven. If big word little, little letters big word if if I woulda coulda shoulda y'all remember that? If you had really known me, Matthew seven and twenty one, Jesus said. To the disciples, they did not we cast out demons in your name? Did not we do that? Jesus said, depart from me. I don't know you. In other words, we don't have a relationship. We ain't been intimate. Put that back up there. I like this. If you had really known me, you would have also known my father. Grant, I know you and I know your daddy. You, you look like your daddy. You act like your daddy. You talk like your daddy. You remind me of your daddy. Oh, Terrence, you look, I, Terrence, dad, mom and daddy came up to the church for a program. We had a, a, a meeting. We was eating outside. I saw, I'm like, Terrence, you look, man, I already know what you're going to look like. <laughs> Dwayne looked like his daddy, Skeet. Spitting image of him. You seen Skeet, you seen Dwayne. Do I need to keep going with this? Joe Nathan, you look like your daddy. Jeremy, you look like your mom and daddy. And we all got features of both, so, you know, don't, don't misunderstand it. But we should resemble our daddy, heavenly. Aha. Uh -huh. 
This is what Jesus is saying here. Uh -huh, that, that see, there's too many out there claiming name only. If you had really known me, you would have also know my father. From now on, you know him. They, they, the world should know who our heavenly father is by their association with us, by our association with him. They knew who I was when I was associated with Satan. <laughs> they knew, here come that fool. Man, let's go, here come Cliff. <laughs> I was bringing something with me. One guy said, Byron. Y'all remember Byron here? Man, when, when, when Cliff rolled up, it was a different energy walked up. Yeah, demons. I knew what I had in me. Listen, he said, know my father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father. All right, let's, let's, let's do this. Let me find this verse. Hold on, bear with me. Bear with me like this here while I go on to a close. I ain't finna close, but bear with me. <laughs> uh, uh, give me, we're going to tie in right here. Give me Ephesians 5 and 1. Let's tie in right here. I'm just following the spirit. I'm just being obedient. Now, how do how the world going to know who we are? I got to make a name. I got my brand. I got, I got, I'm trying to get my product out there. Okay, brand? In the world, they teaching you to have a brand. Now, I heard uh, on the news, this girl do all them commercials. She's in Jackson, a comedian, and they had, and they was teaching downtown how to, how to uh, uh, make your dreams and stuff come true. Nothing against that. But what if God didn't call you to do it? Now, that wasn't for the believer. That wasn't for the believer. That's for unbeliever. Got dreams that God didn't give you. See, Satan's going to sell you a mirage of what you want, and, and, and it's all about you. It's centered about you. It, it ain't, the foundation of it ain't God. But what God got you to do is going to benefit you and everybody else. It's going to bless you, your family, and then some. And I heard that. I'm like, they're going to teach people. How to not to give up on their dream. I never dreamed of becoming a pastor. You, man, you couldn't, ain't enough money in the world to get me to do this. But I would put him on this earth for that. I tried to run. God arrest me. I let him arrest me. I, I apprehend, he apprehended me. I surrendered. But I still was fighting in my heart. I, and God knew I wouldn't surrender. But, but listen, y'all bear with me right here. Listen, let's go. Let's read. Therefore, Become of who? Copy and stop right there. That's what Jesus was doing. Wait, wait a minute. How long you know me, been with me? Three and a half years and you don't know me? If you know me, you know my father. I do the same thing he do. I don't do nothing no different. But Jesus told some of them jokers who believed in trying to use his name, and they did. I don't know you. You work in lawlessness. You don't even obey me. Now, the name of Jesus will run demons off, even though to a degree. Don't get beside yourself in the name of Jesus. We know what happened in Acts. They whooped them, they whooped them joker naked about it. They broke up out of there. Demons, them demons ain't real, ain't real now. Come on, let's finish reading this. Therefore, become imitators. Become imitators. Not impersonators. Imitators. So if I imitate God, shouldn't I have the power and authority? Yes. Yes, copy him. Follow his example. What was his example? As well-beloved children imitate their father. Walk continually in love. That is, that is God value the woman who was caught in adultery, and Jesus told her, woman, where are your accuser? I don't have none. Go and sin no more. Jesus always left everybody he talked to with instructions. He didn't condemn her, but he gave her something to do. What did he do? He left her with a challenge. Go and sin no more. Why would he ask her to sin no more if, she, if, if it wasn't possible? I can't help it. We ain't perfect. You ain't mature yet. I don't do what Jairi do. Sometimes I make crazy faith. My wife said, you strange. 
What you call me? That's weird acting. I just go to looking crazy. And I'm like Jerry. Jerry be looking, making faces. I go to messing with her because I make. Fun. <laughs> Why did I go there? I wouldn't have to make a point. But I ain't going to do it. Now, let me get out of that. Let me leave that alone. All right. Now, make, copy him. Follow his example. That's the well-beloved children imitate their father. Walk continually in love. That is, value one another. Going back to the point I made, God valued the woman with the uh, issue of blood. He valued the woman that was caught in adultery. He valued the drug dealer. He valued the sex trafficker. He valued the murderers. He valued those people. Why? Why? Value one another. None of us can put, say uh, nothing about nothing because what did we do? We were born sin. We ain't did nothing. I don't think it's right for us to have Adam sin and all of us be born in sin. Well, I don't think it's right for us to piggyback off Jesus' righteousness. Earn it. Let's see how you do with that one. Thank you for your righteousness, wisdom, sanctification, and redemption. God valued me when I was a fool. And the Bible said we were, when we were enemies against him, Christ died for the ungodly. Man, I'm glad he did that for me. And that's why I say if God can save me, there's hope for the world. God saved me. Ain't everybody can be saved. <laughs> a, a, a young guy asked me, he said, can Satan, is there any hope for Satan? I'm afraid not. Ain't no hope for him. He don't have a soul. He was a created being. He was created holy, but he chose and this, this, this thing where angels came to earth and, and they think angels fell to earth and, and, and over in, uh, what was that? One of them chapters of Acts, not Acts, but Genesis. That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about the bloodline of self, the sons of, of, of God entered the uh, daughters of men. Godly bloodline got hooked up with ungodly women. That's what they're talking about. You think God was going to let angels fall down here with power to hurt us? You don't know me. Jesus said, you don't know, you don't know the Father. That ain't God. Satan didn't fall to this earth with no power. The church think, universally thinks Satan got power. No, he don't. He got a lure. I'm going to say it again. It's a hook in that lure. If it's this... It's a hook now because he ain't, he ain't got, forgot your resume. Remember, you used to be under his program. He knew you. He know what you like. He know what you don't like. So everything that you like, he going to throw it at you. He going to keep throwing it. Got it. Yeah, he going to keep throwing it at you till he entice you. So do he have any power? He got tricks. Scheme. If he got power, won't he just slap you, taste out your mouth, and make you do it? Satan is like the guy with the gun, a robber. He got bullets, but you the one with the badge, policing the earth for God. Hello? He got unlegitimate power because he got a gun. You got legitimate authority. You legal. See, that's what you got to remember. Amen? So you see right here, uh, value one another, practice empathy and compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others. Don't God do that? Don't God do that? They, they got God mine. Get yours. What? Well, that's, that's the church today. Church don't want to help. It's just like, oh, this morning is a beautiful Sunday, Sunday morning. We got first self righteous going against first Pentecostal. Oh, it's going to be a good one. Pastor back there hooping, he's singing and getting his voice right. The deacon really grouping up this morning. They finna go head to head. What did I just describe? Church battles. Is that what's going on? That ain't what God. And the devil sitting back laughing, picking his teeth, talking about, look at how I make the church fight against each other. They'll never come together to do nothing to me because they too blind to know I'm behind it. Wow. All right? You see that? Listen. Listen. Practice empathy. Compassion. Practice. Practice? What I was going to say, man, you talking about practice. You ain't talking about the game. 
practice unselfishly. Practice empathy and compassion. Is this God? Is God compassion? Why you won't be compassion? I'm asking. I ain't saying you're not. You got to be this if you're going to imitate the Father. If the world going to see God in you. Unselfishly seek the best for others whether you get anything out of it or not. I like doing it. I like helping people can't do nothing back for me. Hello? Yeah, you don't help people and God don't, don't make sure he come back to you. Amen. Listen. The best for others, just as Christ also loved you and gave up himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God slain for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. We're going to stop back here. Let's go back to John 14. And pick up where we were at, at the seven. So uh, he said, verse at eight, let's get eight. And Philip said unto him, Lord, said unto him in eight, Lord, show us the Father and it will suffice us. King James said suffice, it means we'll be satisfied. Okay, show us the Father. This is what Jesus said in the ninth verse. Jesus said unto him, have I been with you for so long a time? And you do not know me. I'm going to say this. Because I'm led to say it. There's people who've been saved a while. And really don't know God. Like they should. If you're in a relationship with somebody. You should know. The people you're in relationship with. If people are hiding things from you. And they claim to be in a relationship with you. And they cloaking. Run. Run. Why? Why did I say that? It's something they hide from you. Why? If y'all tight, ace, boom, coon, or whatever, it should be transparency there. Intimacy, allowing someone to see into you. What are you afraid of? Huh? Mud leaves mud. Mud is mud. When I first started preaching, I said I'm 200, I was weighing 250 pounds. I said I'm 250 pounds of dirt with a spirit. What you talking about? I used to say I'm an original. God broke the mold when he made me. He arrogant. Ain't but one of me. Ain't but one of ten. You can't be nobody. The best person you can be is you who God made you. Why try? Why, why be somebody else when ain't number one of you, Joe Nathan? One of Mike. One of you, young lady. Well, why I'm trying to mimic somebody else when God, the world, God said, I need you because ain't but one of you. Even though I want you to represent me, but you got some skills and ability that I want to use you. Ain't but one of you. But we want to look at Michael Jordan. Jordan. We want to look at this person. No, I'm me. I got my own, I ain't going to say style, but God gave me something that he didn't give somebody else. But we want to limit ourselves by looking at somebody else. Measure, don't measure yourself by yourself, meaning I don't look at the next preacher and then look at me. I'm looking at him, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. Hebrews 12. What? Why well, look at him? We'll go there in a minute, cause he 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 the one went through. He went through hell with gasoline uh, 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 underwear on and a robe. Come out of that sucker, whooping tail. Took the key of death and hell. He said, I'll be back. He, Arnold Schwarzenegger ain't the first one said that. When I heard him say, I'll be back. I said, you a lie. Jesus said that before you. <laughs> See, I done damaged myself because, and, and, and Denise, I apologize when you were talking to me and I went spiritual on you. I'm sorry. And I know what you were saying. You were just talking about the movie. You were like, I didn't mean no harm. I'm, I'm, I'm triggered like that. You hear me? You get it? You get it? I'm triggered because I, I, done, I done renewed my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> She didn't get mad. So she didn't get mad, but I'm apologizing to her because the Spirit told me to. Amen. Good place to do it. I told you there ain't no shame in my game now. All right, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Then we'll be satisfied. All right, Jesus said, I'm, have, you been, have I been with you for so long a time? You do not know me yet, Philip. He was a disciple, wasn't he? Nor recognized clearly. Wait a minute. Didn't they see this man raise the dead? Didn't they see this man open the blind eye? Didn't they see him multiply the fish? And they still, what man of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Wow. 
They didn't know who this brother was. You know why they didn't know? They didn't have no Holy Spirit. We supposed to have it. Do we know? Do we know? Well, if we know who he is, why won't we submit? Why won't we surrender? Well, we got unfinished business out there. You won't get dunamis and you won't get a usia. Dunamis is dynamite power. Same explosive power. That's what he gave the disciples. We going there. Who are you? Now I'm going here to, to, to prove a point. Come on. Come on. You do not know me yet, Philip, or know clearly, uh, uh, recognize clearly who I am. Anyone who has seen me, read that with me, and look to your neighbor. I hate to do this because I normally don't do this. Look to your neighbor. Listen, anyone, say this, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I'm in the Father? And the Father is in me? Come on, come on, come on, break, break, all right, in me. The word that, no, that's good, the word that I say to you, I do not say on my own initiative or authority, but the Father abiding continually in me. He does the work. God ain't asking you to do nothing but show up. <laughs> that's all. I need an empty body. Here's a testing miracles and acts of power. All right, come on back down. Come on back down. Come on back down where I said, uh, where I said that. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. If you don't release that in the atmosphere, you sit here, and you got to understand how, how the word works, the kingdom works, it, it's by speaking things into existence. If you sit here and never release nothing in the atmosphere, and I ask you to say that because we don't say it. I don't hear a lot of people saying, I receive that. Because just hearing it and don't release nothing, you don't get a Holy Spirit nothing to work with. I release stuff in the atmosphere. I purposely do what God did in Genesis. Let there be light. He didn't say, man, it's so dark out here, I can't see my hand. He knew it was dark. You know the situation bad. Why you keep talking about it bad? When you going to say how to make it right? Huh? I said this morning on the way to church, I said it ain't raining until we get out. What, what the Wealthy Channel say? Oh, been rain? I said, it ain't raining until I leave and go home. I'm going to the dollar store. Well, I ain't going to get wet. I got to have a Gatorade. A zero. But we sit here and won't say that. Because you're scared to release it in the atmosphere. When you see me, you've seen the Father. I had to get you to read the say. Won't you, won't you go ahead on and confess that? You got to renew your mind. You will speak. Who is man that thou love? mindful of him. I made it a little lower than God. Didn't we go over that last time? I made you a little lower than me. What's up? God said in the story. God said in the story. Come on. Come on. All right. Listen. Do you not believe that I'm in the Father? Let's go on back. We covered that. The word that I say to you, I do not say on my own initiative. Wait a minute now. We got to be led by the Spirit to speak this stuff into the atmosphere continually. Listen, but the Father abiding continually in me, he does the work, excuse me, his attesting miracles and act of power. If anything going to get done in this earth, in this city, all over this world, it's going to take God's power. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is me. Otherwise, believe me because of the very works themselves, which you have witnessed. If nobody ever see the church do anything, how can they say God is with that church? Nobody in here can say the power of God, you hadn't witnessed this, who've been here. If you've been here over a period of time, you have witnessed the power of God. Some of you in here have witnessed it yourself. It ain't me you, you experience. Because a lot of y'all thought I was crazy. I ain't crazy. I have lost my mind because I had a mind of Christ. I ain't slept nobody since I've been saved. I ain't shot at nobody since I've been saved. What did I say something wrong? Paul didn't go back to beating Christian when he accepted Jesus Christ. But why do so many saints go back? See? Say it. All right. Here we go. I assure you and most solemnly. Wait a minute. Jesus said, I assure you. Are you assured? All right, 
most solemnly say to you, anyone who believes in me as Savior will also do the thing that I do. Stop right there. Stop with number one. Let's go back to uh, 14. Give me verse 1. Let's take it all the way back to John 14 and 1. Then we go on to 28. And you got to get trained. Jesus trained those guys to be disciples. Come on. 14 and 1. John 14 and 1. John 14 and 1. Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, I'm not going to let your heart be troubled. I'm going to protect you. That ain't what they say. This is a command for you. Since you can do what Jesus do, don't you let your heart be troubled. Jesus didn't let him get troubled. Hello? Lord, uh-uh, do not let your heart be troubled. Afraid. Our famous word back in the day was a dank, punk, not gay, but a punk, wimp. Afraid. Coward. You know any? I got to go here. Revelation 21 and verse 6 and 7. I got to go here because the spirit, the, the, these, these, these are interconnecting verses. Give me Revelation 21, verse 6 and 7. Now, we got, we, God got a word for cowards. And he got a word for the unbelieving. He got a word for people will not overcome. Because he said, you can do what I do. You got to get this. Listen, and he said to me, it is done. I am alpha. Wait, wait, wait a minute, who alpha? I'm an alpha female. What? Where that man's come from? I'm a boss chick. You a fool. <laughs> That's what you are. He said, I'm alpha. It is done. I'm alpha. The beginning and the end. Now, when people say they alpha, they say they the beginning. You a lie. See that? See what I'm talking about? I'm the alpha and omega. They saying that. Do they know what they're saying? And the beginning, people saying this song, but do they understand what they're saying? The beginning and the end. That's what Alpha and Omega mean. Listen, to the one who thirst, how thirst I, I will give water from the fountain of the water of life without cause. This is, what is this? Water. What are you talking about? The word of God? That's what you're going to get? For the fountain of life of without cause. He who overcome, uh-oh. He who overcome the world by adhering faithfully to Christ Jesus as Lord. How you overcome the world? He's telling you how to do it. He's telling you how to do it by adhering. What do you mean adhering? What do that mean? Submitting faithfully to Christ Jesus as Lord, sensei, master, ruler, and savior. We'll inherit these things. I will be his God. And he will be my sons, and that means daughters too. Verse 8, here we go. But as for the cowards, don't let your heart be true. Cowardly and the unbelieving. See, look where you put the cowards at. With the unbelieving. Abominable. Who are devoid of character, of personal integrity. Look now. And practice and practice or tolerate immorality and murderers and sorcerers with intoxicating drugs and idolaters and occultists who practice and teaches false religion. There's a lot of that going on out there. There's a lot of that going on. I sent somebody a video of the, of the pastor beating the, beating the member. They had them lying up across the front of the church and they had their belt off. He was just wrapping them. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> he was tearing that behind up. And it was church before. They, people like that kind of men. And, and I see, if, if I had been in there, y'all know, he had to hit me with that belt. <laughs> I would have said, Lord, let me use your name <laughs> to whoop him in the name of Jesus. And them folks down there laying down there taking and getting their behind toes, slap out a socket. What kind of, see, that in this a black church. We crazy. That's all I can say about that. Ain't no way, bruh. Ain't no way. You see the black man spit in the man's face? That had to be staged. That had to be staged. Listen, he who practices false religion, it's a lot out here today, and all liars who knowingly deceive and twist the truth. 
Their part will be in a lake that blazes with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. Cowards. You got to overcome. Now, Jesus overcame. Let's go back to 14 and 1. Now, he said, you believe in me, greater works. You're going to be able to do the same thing. But if you can't stop your heart from being troubled, and Jesus said, you can do what I do, do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, cowardly. Believe confidently in God and trust in him. Have faith. Hold on to it. Rely on it. Keep going and believe also in me. In my father's house are many dwelling places. Uh, King James and Mansion, the Amplifier said dwelling place. There's places in God you yet to go. You satisfied in the foyer. The mansion got a foyer. You stuck in the foyer because you caught up with the chandeliers and, and you got a few keys, but you don't, you don't even know where to lock at. You're using the wrong key. And there's many dwelling places in God. I'm not on ground uh, uh, zero on the first floor of this thing no more because God want all of us to experience these dwelling places in him. But the church ain't ready. He said, launch out into the deep. I'm in ankle deep. Whee! I'm kicking. I'm in the water. Yeah, you in there, but let's go in the deep over your head where you got to depend on him to get out. When I was in job, coach, this girl, big old tall girl was taller than me. She was 6'1", I think. Fell down in the three feet of water. And she was fighting the water. And I was in the pool, and I was watching. I said, stand up. Stand up. The, 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 the uh, lifeguard jumped over in there and helped her get up. And then she was shamed. I said, ma'am, I told you to get up. She was tall now, but she was fighting the water. All she had to do was stand up. You can control that. But see, when you are in over your head, you got to depend on God. We don't like being there because we like pushing our own buttons. We like, we like making all the decisions. I ain't making no more decisions for myself. Every decision I made, it was jacked up. God said, do this. Fine. Every time I do what he said, it works out. It works out. That's, his, his track record is 100. He ain't missed yet. <laughs> How many times you miss? Amen. All right. Listen, listen. Listen to what he said. In my father's house, I'm in the dwelling place. Are you satisfied in the foyer? And you got access to a bathroom? You good? <laughs> you good? If it were not so, I would have told you. Because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back again for you. I will take you to myself so where I am, you may be also. And to the place where I'm going, you know the way. Thomas said unto him, Lord... We do not know where you're going. What? And I understand they didn't have the disciples, but I do so I can be patient. I remember when I was ignorant. They do know the way. You say you don't know. Let's see who the way is. We don't know where we're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the only way. Steve Harvey said there's 800 ways to get to God. He wrote a book. That book was more popular than the Bible. Telling women to wait 90 days before they have sex. The Bible says it's not good for a man to touch a woman unless he married. Steve Harvey says, say, where that come from? See, that's why I can't get with that mess. And a lot of people bought that book and said they were saved and would tell it. So while the man waiting on your 90 days, he tapping and banging all over the, over the town. Right, well, did I say something wrong? I know that actually happened to some people. Like, man, please, let me stop. I am the only way to God. The Oprah said there's a lot of ways. Sorry, Oprah. Sorry, Steve Harvey. Sorry, Hollywood. And the real truth and the real life, no one come to the Father but through me. Jesus said, I'm the door. You got to come through me. Sorry, Farrakhan. Sorry. What that crazy man, uh, Gino Janet, sorry. That man crazy. I thought I was crazy. Let's go back to where we were. Now, 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 you see this. Now we got to go back to uh, John 12. Let me give you 15. Thank you, Lord. No, I'm going to do 15 and go back to 20. 
28. Are y'all getting this? Why are we teaching this? Because why? If you want God's power, you got to do something. You can't, if you're going to be a disciple, listen to this while they turn it. Jesus has a name above all names. He is inviting all New Testament believers to piggyback off his name. But if you don't know who he is, how can you use his name? I don't know you. How can that happen? If we don't fully get to know Jesus Christ and surrender to him, how can we use his name? I think the church will be more proud of using Denzel. Yeah, I'll use my name whenever you come to Hollywood. Use my name. I think you, ah, Denzel, Denzel, uh, 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 Rock, Rock Dwayne Johnson told me if I come there, just throw my name around. People like that. But in the demonic world, they ain't going to get you nowhere in the name of G. Oh, what did he say? You heard me <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Satan said, dog, he really know that man. Satan tried me one night. It was years ago. I was asleep. That joker was attacking me in my sleep. And I was just amazed that he came at me. I said, okay, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Go. He said, you don't believe that. I, in my sleep, I said, what? <gasps> I took a big breath. In the, he, just, whoo, he got up out of there. Don't come here talking about what I don't believe. Huh. John 15. John 15 and 1. John 15 and 1. Right over the next chapter. John 15 and 1. John 15. I am the true vine. My father is the what? Vine dress. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit. The believer is the branch, Christ is the vine. What's running through the vine? What's running to the vine to the branch? What's running from the tree to the branch? Sap. Sap. Nutrients. What's in Jesus, the vine? God is the gardener, the vine dresser. Jesus is the vine. God is the gardener. He know how to make stuff grow. And we the branch. Okay? Every branch that's in Christ, in me, this is Jesus, every believer that is attached to me that does not bear fruit. What kind of fruit? What did Jesus bear? Imitating the Father. Be compassionate toward one another. Come on now. This stuff got to be seen. If love ain't there, joy ain't going to be there. If joy ain't there, peace ain't going to be there. We got to, we got to do the same thing Jesus was doing. We got to show people that we are connected to him. Listen, every branch in me that does not bear fruit. What kind of fruit? Write this verse down. Y'all know it. Some of you ain't been here. Write Galatians 5 and 22 down and begin to read. Every branch that continues, listen, and every branch that continue to bear godly fruit, he repeatedly prunes. You think God is killing you. He cutting you back so you can bear more fruit. Somebody told me, well, uh, it's a tree. Can it be for shade? You mean tell me you're going to plant fruit trees to get shade? Why not plant an oak tree or a pine tree? Now, fruit's supposed to bear fruit. What do believers supposed to do? Bear fruit that looks and resembles who? All right. Listen. So that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. Your fruit don't remain the same. The quality of it gets better. So as you grow in Christ, the quality gets better of the fruit. Will you get, go in the store and get plums that are rotting in and gnats all on them? Or will you get the big, juicy, healthy plum? No, you want them rotten plums where the, where the, where the gnats swarming around, don't you? You want the grapes where somebody's been eating out and they brown? Them the ones you're going to get, right? No, no, I'm confused now. Hold on. You won't get it, but you expect God to accept rotten fruit. You think God done invested all this in the branch and it producing what? Some ain't right. Some ain't right. All that spirit going through the believer and the quality of the life of the believer is what? At all time low. God know my heart, you judge me. Ain't that what they say? You judging me. 
No, we're not judging you. The Bible says, if I get the telephone pole out of mine, this is what Jesus said, if you do judge, make sure you don't got the telephone pole out of your eye, that you can help the brother or sister get the splinter out of their eye. Now, if I done got my life together over here in this area and I see you struggling, ain't it only right for me to say, I done this to get this out. And the church said, you judging them. You know why? They don't want to change. They like that. People love bondage. They ain't got nothing to talk about. They ain't got nothing to talk about. Man, look at my handcuffs and deep rub hand please. Them things don't be cutting my circulation off. I told y'all I used to go buy the pharmacist in, in uh, Walmart. Just to hear those people talk about how many illnesses they had. I used to walk by there. Oh, I got these five prescriptions. I'm so sick. You ain't sicker than me. I got this. They go to compare and sick. And I'm like, I'm like, and you ask them, do I know? Yeah, I know the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm just saying. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? If you attach to him, a life of God is flowing through you. Let's go to 28. Let's go to 28. Now, every person born into the world has this. Oh, I, my page done flipped. Here we go. Jesus has a name above all names. Jesus' name is above cancer. Over in Philippians 2, he humbled himself, right? And God gave him a power and authority and a name above all names. At the name of Jesus, every tongue going to confess and every knee going to bow. Whether you made to or whether you accept them now, you can do that. But to piggyback off his name in order to utilize the rights and privileges that comes with all authority. Jesus is saying today, you are with me. Whenever you're ready to operate in discipleship mode, Jesus said, I'm ready. My power is available. But when you just want to be a believer, now, if you look through the Bible and do a search for me, in, in, in the original Bible in the King James, did it say, go make Christians? It said, make disciples. Let's get it. Matthew 20, I'm going back here. I'm still here. Jesus came up and said to them, all authority, power and authority, absolute rule in heaven and on earth. How, did, how do you get power and authority? Through obedience. Joe Nathan, you became a manager because you back in the storeroom eating up pizzas. They come in there, you got sauce all around your mouth. I'm cleaning up. I just bust some sauce. I just lick my finger. <laughs> Now, now, you must be a good worker for to be made a manager. Why do they trust you with some authority on their job? Uh-huh. You know, I'm going to say this. The reason why a lot of members, believers, not members, disciples, don't have authority with God, because he can't trust them. How is it your job can trust you and Jesus can't? That don't look good. Don't look good. Don't look good. Terrence, how do you get authority on your job? Being, a, being a, as, the, as the black, some of the black workers say, a sucker. That's how they see you, don't they? Why do we belittle each other? That's all we know. Where do we learn that from? That's all we know how to do. I don't like you in that position. I do a better job. That's what they're saying. And then when you give them the job, they can't handle it. See, this, this is what gets me. I don't understand why we do each other like that. But every black supervisor I had, I worked well with them because I said, I want to make you look good. What you want me to do? You in this position, I'm going to work hard because I, I worked hard for anybody. But for, specifically for a black supervisor, I didn't give him no trouble. I didn't give him no trouble because I wanted his job to be. Because I know one day, I, if I'm in that position, I know it was going to come back to me. So, when you disrespectful to your boss, and God going to make sure you get in that position. So you can get the same thing or, uh, and worse. Uh, when you first started, what happened to your nation? <laughs> Did it come back? Hello? Mm, really? When you disrespectful to your parents, all that's wrapped up in there. Why did that happen to me? You, 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 God said, just think. Just think. You ain't squeaking clean in this. God going to make sure this stuff got a way of coming back to you. So be respectful. Respect the next person who, who, who get the position because you don't never know when it's your turn. 
But you got to put somebody down. Got to talk about the bread. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dee, 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 dee. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I really don't. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. The Bible says pray for your leader. I pray for Choke Way. I pray for Tate Reed and them. But when your heart ain't in the right place to do, you can pray till the cow come on. Ain't nothing going to happen. Ain't nothing going to happen. You got to want to do right. Come on. Let, let, let's get this. Go ye. Listen, all power. You're given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore, and make Christians. Of all nations. It said what? We're just one nation, all nations. Help the people to learn of me. Well, the King James, what did the King James say? I got one. Let me get my King James. And I want to uh, uh, pinpoint this because I wrote some stuff from the King, King James uh, 28. And it says 27. Here we go. All right. It said, go there for and teach. What? Teach all nations. Number one, teach all nations, baptizing them. I'm going to drop down to verse 20. Teaching them to observe. Wow. Teaching them to observe, that means how to live it out. What you teach them, teach them how to live it out. How many going to do that? How many, how many pastors going to help you to live it out by living it out in front of you? Huh? This is came from our Savior's mouth, teaching them to observe. That means how to live it out, Jesus' truth in their world. Don't live out your opinions. Live out Jesus' truth in the world. You are a living epistle. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Not your opinion, not your feeling. Living out the truth of what Jesus taught. Our job is to represent his truth in this lost world. To live it, apply it, and not just talk about it. What you think? But when you're in a church and they're not teaching you how to walk it out, your chances of ever walking it out are going to be slim and none. Because the pastor should be teaching these things. It should be a resounding of these things. It should be a resounding. Let's go to Acts, please. Give me Acts 17. Nope, nope, nope. The whole Acts. We're going there. But give me Luke 9. Give me Luke 9, 1 through 6. Luke 9, 1 through 6. We're going to teach you to observe. How many classes have I had back? I've been here 30 some years, and I've always had classes going on here. Way before a lot of y'all came out, I used to have classes on Friday night, maybe Thursday night, but I had classes here. Bobby, Bobby gone. So Cheryl was here. Used to come. Bobby was uh, here. They used to come. Few people used to come because I had classes because. I was trying to do just what he said, make disciples, teaching. So God was running this through my mind yesterday. He said, you have always, after God got on me and really whooped me, so I locked in and said, okay, Lord, you said teach them. You said feed my sheep. I'm going to feed your sheep. And so I began to teach, 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 discipleship, 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 how to be a follower. I taught it, taught it, taught it. I bagged up. I got with the youth, started working with the youth. Start uh, uh, picking the youth up during the summertime, take them to the zoo. We used to go to Westside Gym over there. I used to pack lunches. I used to spend time with those young people because I know how important it was to have somebody with God in their life dealing with the youth. I did all that. We had a, a, a night out up in the parking lot. We had Pepsi came out and donated drink. We had hot dogs. We had a goal out here. And we were going to be out. Channel 12 ended up coming out here. What are you trying to do? How many churches you think came? We ain't. That's just who we are. We some pitiful people. Because I didn't come up with the idea I can't support it. That's the division and Satan is laughing at us because as long as we stay divided, we will never get this work done. This is enough work for everybody to go around. You know what the problem is in the church? If the churches do come together, who's going to run it? That's their biggest concern. Jesus is going to run it. Lord, have mercy. That's crazy. 
Come on, give me that verse. Now, Jesus called together the 12 disciples, underlined 12 disciples, gave them the right to exercise power and authority. What did he give them the right to do? Now, before he, he went to the cross and rose again, he let them try this power out. Did Judas have it? Did, 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 did Judas, the one that was going to deny him, did he have the same power? He said the 12. He didn't say the 11. Gave them the right to exercise power and authority over can't get the church to believe this. And to heal. Then he sent them out on a what? To preach what? The reason why ain't nothing happening, we ain't preaching kingdom. We preaching, ain't he all right? Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, he's Job Hoss pawing in the valley. <laughs> right here, the kingdom of God. He, he told him to send to preach the kingdom. Ain't that what he, ain't nobody preaching kingdom like that and to perform healing. And he said unto them, listen, take nothing for your journey that might be encumbered, that might encumber you. Neither a walking stick, nor a bag, nor bread, nor money. Come on now. And don't even take two tunics apiece. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that city. Go to another. And for all those who do not welcome you when you leave that city, shake the dust off your feet, breaking all ties with them as a testimony against them that they, listen, that they reject my message. Everybody ain't going to receive the true message. When Jesus taught in, in Luke 4 and 18, he told them, good news. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me as anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, heal the broken heart, set captive free. Who you think you are? Telling me I ain't got to be sick no more. I ain't got to be poor. That's what he was telling them. What they tried to do to him? Kill him. Tried to lead him off a cliff. Didn't I tell you people love bondage? They ain't got nothing to talk about. <laughs> Listen, breaking all time. So they began going from village to village, preaching the gospel. And we know they preached the kingdom. And healing the sick everywhere. It happened because they preached the kingdom. When you don't preach the kingdom, you don't preach his kingdom come, his will be done, then where the power coming from? Downtown? Can't read? Come on now. What's the name of uh, the guy used to be David Holden? Used to be the Secretary of State? No, nah, where, 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 wherever he is. Where is it coming from? Down at the county farm? Where the power coming from? Hollywood? Hollyweird? <laughs> you see that, don't you? All right, let's go to uh, Luke 10. Let's go to Luke 10, and let's read one. We're going to read two, and then we're going to jump to 17. So we see where he delegated the power and authority. Did they get results? Have, have, Jesus, have God changed his mind about giving us authority? Why, 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 what, what, how long is it going to be before we allow him to use us? That's what Paul was saying. When I'm weak, then I can do the work. As long as I'm, I, I'm admitting that I'm weak, if I say it's me, because on, on, on TV and on all these things, uh, uh, these folk talking about how powerful they are, how spiritual they are. They, if you represent God, let it be done. What did they say? The, the kingdom of God has come unto you when healing comes. That's what Jesus said. He told them that. Come on. All right. Now, after these things, the Lord appointed what? Seventy others. So Jesus had a, a, a full-time staff of 12. He had a, 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 after this, the Lord appointed 70 others. He had a staff, a part-time staff of 70. He had a full-time staff. So he had more. It ain't about how many disciples he had. The 12 was the, was the inner circle. But he had other disciples, two by two. Entered into every city, every place where he was about to go. He evangelized the area before he went through there. And he was saying to them, the harvest is abundant, for there are many who need to hear the good news about salvation. A lot of them ain't heard the truth about God's word. A lot of them don't know, really know the true message of salvation. Because they have heard something, give me your hand and give God your heart. That ain't going to save you. But the workers, those, listen, listen. There are many who need to hear the good news about salvation, but the workers, those available to complain, proclaim the message of salvation are few. 
Therefore, prayerfully ask the Lord of the harvest to send, forth, send out workers into his harvest. Go your way and listen carefully. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. What did Jesus tell you these people like? Oh, you, you don't know. Oh, they didn't mean no harm. Look at that verse. What, what did Jesus say? Who, you, who word you think I'm going to take? Well, you just too hard on these folk. You supposed to be hard on a wolf. They going to bite you? Or you like getting bit? Do not carry a money belt. Did he change his message? Why well, don't carry a money belt or a provision bag, extra sandals? And one of them said a script. And King James said a script. See there, God don't want you can't write down no message. I said, Lord, have mercy. I said, look up the word script and you will see it. That ain't talking about writing no message out. Why well, we got a book to preach from then? Uh, anyway, provision bag, extra sandals. Don't take extra sandals. And do not greet anyone along the way who would delay you. You ain't got time to be stopping and talking how you doing. The kingdom message is important. Why did Jesus tell them, let nobody hold you up? Don't let nobody. And we, it, it, see, we, we, see, Jesus was serious about the work that he was doing. Whatsoever house you went in first, say peace. That is a blessing of well-being and prosperity and favor of God to this house. And if anyone of uh, 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 peace is there, Someone who is sweet-spirited. Listen to what, this is why you say this. Sweet-spirited and hospital, your blessings of peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Let me break, let me break this down. If hell up in there, stank attitudes, all lit up in there, don't you bless that house. That's what your Lord said. Listen. Stay in the house eating and drinking what they provide for, for, uh, uh, for the labor is worthy of his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whatever, uh, whenever you go into a city and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. You hear me? It, uh, now, this man was a missionary. He wrote, he wrote this book and I read it. He said when he went over in these African places and stuff, way back off in the bush to do missionary, he said they was eating spiders, they was eating dog, he didn't eat all that because he didn't want to offend the people or win them over. He said he ate everything that they put before. He said he didn't ate some stuff. Now, Paul said nothing is to be refused with prayer. And he prayed over it. He didn't get sick, but he ate with those people because he didn't want to offend them. If you're going to win them over, you can't keep them offending them. What is this saying right here? Now, let's go to 17. Now, did he give them? He gave them the same power and authority. Did they get results? Verse 17. Let's see. Let's see. So we, uh, if he gave it to the 12 and then he gave it to 70, he's talking about us too. The 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us through your name. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Don't get lifted up now. I'm the one that throwed it behind up out of there. Listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents, scorpions, and all the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy. What's wrong with the church? God got to trust you to give you this kind of power. If you're not going to obey, if you're not going to submit, then you won't have it. You, you might be a believer and not be a disciple. You might be a Christian, and I hope you are, but to become a disciple, to have this power, you got to want to become a follower, a visible, verbal follower of his teaching if you want this. If not, Jesus said many believed on him, but he did not trust him. He did not allow that power to be released in their life. And the majority of the churches cannot do this. You think God playing with it? What's the, no, what's the need, need of being in him? What we're learning, you got uh, 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 benefits of being in him. This is what we're supposed to be doing out there. I'm not scared of no demon. I know who I am. I've been sent. I'm using his name. I'm using his authority. And I'm using his power. If I stay in him, I can do these things. But you got to get past a lot of this stuff. We got Acts 17. Now we're going. I'm going to be closing here in a minute. So did Jesus really want that? 
Paul said, when I'm weak, I'm truly. Ephesians 6 and 10, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Didn't he say that? Ephesians 6 and 10 and 11, put on the whole arm of God. What is the arm of God? The word of God. You got to become teachable. You got to become teachable. Acts 17. Listen, now after Paul and Silas had traveled through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul entered into the synagogue as was his custom. He, what? His custom? He was faithful. Jesus had a custom of going. Somebody said uh, Jesus graduated church. When I showed him as a custom, he went to the synagogue. People just, man, people will say anything. Jesus ain't graduated from no church and he's telling us to go. You ain't going to graduate. Lord, anyway. And for three Sabbaths, listen, three Sabbaths, three Saturdays, he entered, that's a Jewish son of God. This ain't no New Testament church. Now. He entered, he, he, uh, Sabbath, he engaged in discussion and friendly debate with them from the scriptures. Three, explaining and pointing out scriptural evidence that it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise, uh, rise from the dead and say, this Jesus, whom I'm proclaiming to you, is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. Some of them were persuaded to believe and join Paul and Silas, along with a large number of God-fearing Greeks and many of the leading women. These were prominent people that he was speaking to. But the unbelieving Jews became. And what? Taking along. Oh, y'all didn't know that was in there, did you? Some thugs. The low. <laughs> Yo, who better than yet? Who better to get? Get the thug. Get the low life. In the marketplace, they formed a mob. Ain't them the right people to get? But in the God's house, it's supposed to be love, kindness, patience. But you find the mob, the mob and the thug and the thugs in the low life. Nothing wrong. They need to come in and hear the gospel. But to allow them to act is a whole different situation. In the marketplace. They formed a mob and set the city in an hmm. oh, and then attacking Jason out and tried to bring Paul and Silas out to the people. If we stop Paul and Silas, we can stop this foolishness. But when they failed to find them, they dragged Jason. Look what they got. They dragged him. And some brothers before the city authorities shouted, listen, these men who have turned the world Two men. What'd they do? Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to keep reading. Let me say this. 9-11 happened. It wasn't a whole nation of people came over here. These people were here in the city, in the United States. A few people in the name of a false god came over here and shook up the United States in the name of their god. Now, look at all the trouble we have to go through to travel in airports. They rocked the city. They changed this thing. If two, if a little old group of people can uproar the United States, take over planes and do all this stuff in the name of their God, and what we do? Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. What you need power and authority to do that for? You don't need no power for that. Listen, listen. These men have turned the world upside down and have come here too. And Jason welcomed them into his house and protect. What did he do? He took the men of God. He trusted God and he protected those men of God. And they were all saying, listen, things contrary to the decree of Caesar. Actually, claim said they were talking about Caesar. Listen. Claiming there's another King Jesus. <laughs> they stirred up the crowd and the city authorities who heard these things. And when they had taken security, bail from Jason and the, and the other, they let them go. 
But he was he got drug out because of his faith, and he protected them men because he knew they was authentic. These two men, Rock Thessalonica, what are we going to do? You got to have some power to do that. You got to have some authority. But if you just going to be, be a, 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 you know, a passive believer and not really want to use this, this power and authority, doing them as an user, uh-uh, say, that ain't what we supposed to be doing down here. So I'm going to say this. Jesus said in my clothes, if you're ashamed on me before men, talking about the world, I won't mention your name to the Father. He said, I will not mention your name. And Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. He, your name, if you ain't talking about Jesus, not to people who believe us, that's friends. But he talking about to the lost. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. It's people out here don't know him. I get to help people all the time. And I'm glad God puts me in those situations because I get out to be in those situations. So I'm just telling you, I, I need that power and authority because through the daytime, I have to minister. I don't just minister here. I'm looking for people who need help so I can help them. So why do we need power and authority? Teaching. Let me go back to my thought. Part two. And we close in here. I, I hope this has been enlightening and encouraging to you. I ain't trying to put you down. I'm, not, I'm trying to encourage you to yield, surrender. I got two more verses, and y'all already know, Philippians 2 and 13, Philippians 4 and 13. I'm ready for anything, equally anything, through Christ who infuses inner strength through me. So if we got his strength, Jesus said, greater works than these you're going to do. And we got to look around and see, are we going to do the greater works? What's the need of the Holy Spirit if we're not going to do it? The power of surrender. Nope, that's not it. Uh, uh, teaching, what did I say with that topic? Yeah, a teachable spirit always precedes success. Did Jesus teach those disciples? Did they have success with the demons? Okay, we can too. That's our message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.